two, one. Nat Hodges, welcome to the podcast. Oh, hey, Very good, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, some technical difficulties uh-huh. we got through uh-huh. it. Um, we were chatting off camera. We were mm-hmm. chatting over training. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you were saying um, back in the day, a lot of yeah. powerlifting training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I was pretty technical with my measurements. I'd me- I'm doing a lot of measurements. This even volume and sets across a week too. So I'd normally train between 15 and 16 hours a week of, of powerlifting. And, um, but my life revolved around it then too. So yeah. I was always really conscious of recovery. And now, because I'm pretty much career focused and fiance and stuff like that yep. um, and I'm endurance training it's just a whole different ball game like I got overtrained so quick and yep. yeah and I, the signs of overtraining for me are like low mood my fuse I've got no patience um, I'm rushing to get through the day I'm craving coffee sugar fat okay. yeah and I was like oh, I know where I'm at I've got to chill yep. <laughs> yeah yeah in recent at times you were saying running's been been your game yeah so yeah. this year decided to commit to running because I've always hated it um, yeah. it's, it's, it's I've all, not enjoyed my like, what is this running game about and it was like that for the start no, I didn't enjoy it I didn't really enjoy it at all um, but my fiance is a like kind of lower limb specialist and, and run coach so yeah. she taught me how to run properly and it's a game changer yeah footwear lower limb feet ankle strength it all matters technique yeah. breathing posture and once you find once I found a group I'm like oh this is amazing yeah yeah and uh, to take it kind of in a bit of a left field way I'm, I'm really prone to big kind of mystical or even spiritual states and so running got me there so quick and reliably really yeah, yeah. what what sort of I'm fascinated yeah. by that stuff like that uh-huh. meditative style mm-hmm. Yeah, state that we hit when mm-hmm. we're doing endurance training. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, every you're in single the, time. The rhythm and the yep. j- just what yep. what do you what do you mean? Tell me. Uh, so my first kind of um, influence in that kind of stuff was I was 15 and I went for a, my mum used to live on the back of a golf course, close to a golf course. Went for a walk uh, and I remember walking down a fairway. Obviously, it's different shades of green. Yep. It's a golf course, and I, I have no clue what happened, but I fell into a spiritual state of mind so I I felt like I could see the entire golf course I felt like I did an entire lap around the golf course um, as just awareness and once I hit the green I was laying I was laying down on my back looking up as the sun was coming down and I could just feel the pulse of the golf course I never told anyone about that till I was like 23 because I was like oh that was weird I'm not telling that anyone like I'm probably losing it yeah but later where my kind of career took me it come back as a pretty important part of my life Wow. Full circles that running is a bit of a gateway for, yep. for that, yeah. How Which is also f- dangerous because you can't yeah. feel it. Like that kind of state is so analgesic, it's so pain killing that you don't know how cooked you are. <laughs> yeah, with, with in the moment, and then yeah. also like liking running so much that you do more of it. Uh-huh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which goes in line with the overtraining stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So wow. that's where that's where I'm at with my training. <laughs> wow, man, that that's that's not so. Right now, are you taking it easy, letting your body heal, recover, or kind of. Yeah. What, <laughs> I've, what got a, I've got a 30k run booked in like five weeks. Okay. And I'm so underprepared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So yeah. 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 Awesome, man. Yeah. Um, so many different topics that I, that uh-huh. I like to chat about. You mentioned Braden's work that, that yep. she's doing. Yep. I've been seeing you guys practicing. Um, the foot stability yep. and the strength work on the beam. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I'm getting myself one of those. I've ordered Get a one. Beam. Yeah, yeah I've ordered one from Braden. I want to keep keep yeah. exploring that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, you um, you did the barefoot running yep. at, with your last big event. Yep, yep. So the run the running changed for me when I got out of conventional shoes and into barefoot shoes. My fiance is much more of a. She's got a much more better grip on this than me. But all it did was it allowed me to feel the ground. It allowed me to use the strength and and well yeah the strength in my foot and the mechanics of my foot to kind of propel me along I didn't realise I was running and just landing on my heel yeah. and just jacking up my back jacking up my knees I was like I, don't, I can't run three days a week what do you mean I'm, it takes five days to recover Yeah. Tra- uh, transitioning to a four foot running style like landing on the balls of your feet and using a lot of calf was pretty excruciating at the start once your kind of calves and Achilles adapt it's just a springboard it's, a, oh. it's amazing it's so amazing yeah and it really kind of fascinated me grabbed me yeah, yeah. D- what, did, did you do anything that worked well to transition from like that heel thump to the to the <laughs> yeah. front foot the reason I ask is I've been rocking the Vivo yeah, the Vivos, foot, yeah. yeah shout out to Vivo so, yeah since our last <laughs> catch up um, and I'm loving them so far for yeah, work cool. they're great um, the, the first couple of weeks I actually f- felt you know, at the end of the day I would feel m- my feet uh-huh. 
like alive yeah, heaps yeah, more. Yeah, they're, yeah. Like, they're like activated more uh-huh. at the end of the day. Where it's yeah. like I never never felt that mm-hmm. coming out of my ASICs or my or my Nikes at yeah. the end of a shift. Um, but then I went for my first run two nights ago. In the Vivos? Yeah. Yes. Man, it sucked. Yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, oh, why am it I sucked. why am I <laughs> bashing my yeah. heels so yeah. much? Yeah. 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 Um, and then I, as I went along, I'm like, all right. Did you think. come into a four foot kind of stance? Did you try that or um, I, I just, even flat foot? I just thought it's my first run in them. I'm yeah. just going to let my body do whatever cool. it wants to do. Cool. And I was just monitoring it as I was doing it. And I found myself heel striking a lot. Like yeah. I could, I would yeah. feel, yeah, like yeah, you yeah, hear it. And <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So, so that's fascinating. What did, what worked for you as you transitioned? Because yeah, so I feel like we're similar. Off camera, we were uh-huh. chatting about the big rib cage, big, big legs, legs as well. Yep. Not the most efficient no, runners. No, no, no. Good on the bikes. But yeah. Here, but yeah. So Braden, again, my, my fiance would lose it at me saying this, but because she's really technical with transitioning people into the shoes, which I encourage. I did the least technical way ever. Yeah. She was like, oh, you should try barefoot running. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. I'll go tomorrow morning. <laughs> so yeah. I just got the shoes off and literally ran barefoot. Um, around uh, there was a, there's a 1k grass track and it's really nice but I started in the middle of winter so okay. I'd get there at 4.30 dark and yep. I'd just kick the shoes off and go for a run I mean you, you, my feet would freeze like they would yeah. I would lose feeling in my feet but I felt so good I could feel my toes wait you were actually barefoot on the grass actually barefoot okay and yep. not even like on the path as well I just yep. started running barefoot on the yep. road yeah. <laughs> and like my feet were hacked up That's and I was like nuts. I kind of like this is cool <laughs> That's yeah. not. So okay. now when Brad and I go for like uh, hikes or whatever, I just kick yep. the shoes off and just yep. like okay. in, in my feet just kind of adapt to the to the rocks and the earth and it's I love it, mate. I'm a full fanatic. That's yeah. nuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you get calluses or open bare, with open your feet up at all? No. Uh, I got calluses. They never really opened up. Yeah. Um, and then they just they just hard. They yep. just started to work for me. Yeah, okay. it's cool. Crazy. When you run, when you run, kick the shoes off. Yeah. Okay. I'll start on grass first. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, in the gym game, off Mm -hmm. off air, we're also chatting about everything that um, Uh that you've been involved in Brisbane over the years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you up to now, and what's some what's some things that you've been up to in the past? Okay. So right now, um, currently, well, an overview would be I'm an author, I'm a personal advisor, I'm a business advisor, and I'm a meditation teacher. Okay. That's what I do now. Um, I've got my company set up. I've got a bunch of clients and things that we do around Brisbane. Yeah. Before that, my career started in academics at QUT. So I did exercise physiology at QUT, ended up helping out there just lecturing and tutoring and things like that. Yeah. Helping out with some research. And it was I, I enjoyed it, but it definitely wasn't like, it definitely wasn't lighting me up. Yeah. And there was a little moment where I was thinking, I'm, I know I was young. Um, I didn't really look. I didn't really have the grades to be lecturing and tutoring, but I had the personality. So <laughs> I was, got along really well with all the staff and yeah. everything, and that was fine. But it did feel a bit funny. Like I, I don't have, I've got no business fan up here. Yeah. Like this is not, you know, great money. What? But, what subjects? What were you teaching? Uh, RT, resistance training. Yeah. Okay. And X is one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, I, I did have a moment where I was like, you come on, Nathaniel, like pull your head in. You yeah. You can't be teaching. Yeah. Go and get some runs on the board. Yeah. So that's when I decided to jump out and it was funny, man. When I went to QUT, there was a bit of a um, pedestaling of clinical over um, general fitness popul- population. There was like a, everyone wanted to either be clinical, like, clinical, yeah. yeah, clinical hard, like either clinical EP, physio or like sleep scientist, like that yeah. was the thing. And I was like, man, I'm going into general pop, like that, that's, that's where I, that's where I'm going to go. Yeah. So um, that was when I was powerlifting as well. So powerlifting background, I was pretty good at the academic side and applied as well. Mm. And so I started my businesses from there. I started gym small gym studios and they grow into it grew into like a hybrid studio commercial gym okay um but man i i like when i look back i loved i loved my my gym so and it grew so fast like it grew so fast it from i broke two commercial leases because we outgrew the places okay. i had no advisory i had no i was just winging it winging That's it awesome. yeah and um young and had a lot of ended up making a lot of money and did a lot of dumb things Burn a lot of relationships, burnt personal relationships. Um, early success is pretty dangerous mm. on, on someone's development. So I'd, I'd lick my wounds a lot there for a little bit after. So yeah. big rise, big fall. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Where was your gym? Um, it started in Milton. Okay. Matt, I had 80 square metres. That's okay. where it started. 80 square metres. 
and then within six months we're in Albion, which is about 250 square yep. metres, and then that's when some subcontractors come on. Within six months of that, we were in Eagle Farm with 600 squares. Okay. We built some offices in there, built, yeah, um, had a whole, like a cult, we was a culture heavy business. Yeah. We had big banners on the wall, we had, man, we had animals in that gym. Yeah. Oh man, it was so much fun. Serious so, powerlifters? Yeah, real, yeah. Real, but we had a hybrid approach, so we were doing a lot of athlete stuff, a lot of powerlifting stuff, um, a lot of things that are kind of normal now, we, mm. we had a grip on that early. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I got silly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of pushed the envelope with too much. Okay. Yeah. But it's in, it was always in my personality to do so. So even the name, the name of the gym was called Campus, C-A-M-P-V-S. So okay. it was obscure. Yep. It was deliberately done that way. People could people struggled to say it, they didn't understand it, but I liked it because it was kind of obscure. Okay. And there was, no, there was no real, like, mystical reason. It was, I couldn't get C-A-M-P-U-S in a domain, so I just changed it to a V. That's I got the domain. I was like, that's the name now. Yep. Yeah. I didn't have, I had like a health, kind of, bit of a healthy disregard for normal stuff. It's kind of cool, man. Yeah. And yeah. It, it worked. I mean, it kind of worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What came next? You were, you were involved in some other gyms? Um, yeah. So I helped a friend. Yep. Um, I kind of brokered him into his first gym. Okay. And we had a relationship there. And um, he's now Black Dad Barbell Jack. Um, he's over at G Bung. He's over at G Bung. What's it called? Black, Black Dam. Bar. Okay. Yeah. No, powerlifting gym. I was involved with PTC. Now Valhalla used to be PTC. Okay. Um, that was a fun time in my life, and that that was that was a really that was pretty formative. It was um, I moved to Brisbane, and for the first three years, I was really unsure of being in Brisbane. I didn't really find my feet or find my place. <laughs> and that gym just was the kind of it solidified. I, I got started to make some friends and didn't feel so isolated because I just trained by myself and studied. Mm. And then once I found that gym, like, I got a social life. So powerlifting really grabbed me. Yeah. Yeah, and then tried to be strong. Yeah. <laughs> That's hard. I've seen some photos <laughs> of you back in the day, man, yep. lifting some serious weights. Yeah, yeah. That, yep. that, that, I was kind of strong back in the day. Yeah. Man, everyone got strong so fast. Like, I think I competed for three years. And that was a really intense three years. Three years straight. Yeah. Then I, when I started coaching properly, that kind of took precedence over my own lifting. But um, the standard got insane so fast mm. like I think from memory I totaled 620 at 82 in 2012 2012 yeah. and that got me second place in the 82s mate yeah. that doesn't get a look in now like yeah. that's 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 training weights yeah. you know people are people, people aren't comp- even competing and doing that now yeah and the standard just got crazier and crazier and crazier yeah you were that sort of first wave first of wave. power lift and all that. like yeah. now it's heaps more common in Brisbane there's power lift Yep. powerlifting gyms popping mm-hmm. up everywhere mm-hmm. yeah. and that was a when I reflect on the bit of the like kind of the downfall was the gyms were doing well not because I was some amazing you know coach it was I was in the slipstream of a trend okay you couldn't I couldn't really get it wrong and any gym that popped up them couldn't really get it wrong <laughs> yeah um I mean you can get it wrong when you get greedy but yeah. but um we had a really really fun time and, and we were a, we were a really solid unit yeah. And then it it it, it all exploded. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of these mistakes that you made from a, from a learning point of view? Yep. When you reflect, what do you what do you draw on, man? Um, first thing is, oh, where do I even start? Money, first one. Um, make, making making a lot of money is good. It's a good thing. It's a, when, but when you're young and stupid, it can be a really really bad thing. Mm. First mistake is probably just telling too many people about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, really, just being showy. Yeah. Um, which wasn't it's not good in reflection it's not good for the clients to see that it doesn't really look good like yeah. can contain your shit you know yeah. you can do well but keep it contained yeah um, second thing was I overemphasized I was a real culture heavy person I liked the sense of feels and vibe and community but overemphasizing that almost become manipulative okay it's like if you're not with this culture then you're you know you're outside of it and that seemed obvious and cl- I mean it was it was just young and blind but that was my kind of approach. Mm. It was real kind of, you know, culty. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you're learning that stuff, it does feel it does feel like that. But that was a mistake too. And what I mean by mistake is you, that doesn't allow people to grow. Mm. It, puts, it puts them into a box. And yeah. people need a little bit of boxing and a little bit of structure, but I, I overdid it. Okay. Yeah. And you just get people, people just push away then if you go too, too culture heavy mm. and not really an authentic culture. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to when I reflect I tried to bottle what was working and I just wanted it to repeat 
yeah. but at the cost of staff and friendships and okay. yeah yeah but man like god there's some stories of what went down in the gym like yeah just stories where you'll, you'd go are you fucking serious like I can't name names but there was just like it was so incestuous really it was so yeah. incestuous <laughs> it was crazy it got crazy yeah, yeah. man it was, a, it was a movie sometimes right oh we had people like <laughs> we, <laughs> we had people that would just rock up the gym and run in and just start like yelling like this fuck person did this and I'm like holy shit full on yeah yeah full on you slept with this and you slept Jeez. with that I'm like oh my god like yeah. the, the, the the member, the staff, or everyone, the member, everyone, man, everyone. Geez. Yeah, it was oh, hectic. No. Yeah, yeah, it was nuts. It was the nuts. dirty gym game, huh? Totally, totally. <laughs> uh, do you remember a Facebook page called Gym Confessions? Oh, man, man this was. I this think was I think I do. Like actually. probably 2013, 2014. Yeah, yeah. Like we popped up on Gym Confessions. Oh, like, really? It was like anonymous people writing about like <laughs> weird shit that went down in gyms. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I remember when um, those pages were a thing on Facebook and mm-hmm. there was all sorts of ones popping up. There yeah. was like a QUT one and then yes. like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, a the, QUT the campus. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, and then like yeah. random things. Yeah, so my yeah. greatest achievement, we featured on gym conventions. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 But people had a lot of lot of fun times as much as there was some stuff, mistakes, there was a yeah. lot of... Um, we, were pushing, we were pushing boundaries. I mean, we, were, we were certainly pushing boundaries. Um, even just with, like, I wasn't big in the social media stuff, but just early, just doing early content videos and doing Facebook Lives while people train wasn't a popular thing. We, okay. we were doing, yeah, we were doing it early. I was running a lot of PT education as well. Yeah. Um, doing a lot of upskilling for for people in, in, the, in the industry. And w- it's funny, man, when you look back, I was like, I could have stuck that out. And I, I did it kind of... I was 80% invested. I still loved it. I still delivered well. But I was like, if I kept going, I didn't realise how much people liked it mm. and how how well the, the gym could deliver that, that type of stuff. Um, we just, we were early. That's yeah. the way I could put it. We were early. Yeah. yeah. And early looked weird. Yeah. <laughs> like b- before the peak, before yep. it was common. Man, people, people now still hit me up like, what the why did you do? Why did you not stay in the game? Like, I know, I know, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty big step up, right? 80 yeah. squares, 200, yeah. 600 squares. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We had a, like operations manager. Offices. Offices, that, yeah, the whole deal. Yeah, we had, we had PT education. We Jeez, had, man. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was fun and just wild. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what happened after, man? You kept coaching? Uh, so, or, or yeah, I, by the time I had finished... The, the last the last gym I was down to I think I was doing about 10 hours a week of on the floor coaching and the rest was kind of more BDM and, yeah. and things like that but again that even, I, even when I reflect on that I was like I didn't need to do that I was just being soft like I could have worked more and trained more people yeah. hmm. but I got so stuck in the management side of things that I thought that's what you needed to do right. it wasn't just be bloody good at your craft and stick yeah. at that and, and yeah. things will evolve naturally but you come to learn that later yeah Sounds like a powerful journey, man. And every Crazy. time, every time we catch up when um, when you're at Zara, um, our chats just go pom pom. Yeah. And like, yeah, you're always um up to up to a lot, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I know um Darko has spoken very highly of you mm-hmm. with um when Darko was first um ramping up his business and mm-hmm. um he would attend some Saturday sessions with you mm-hmm. boys mm-hmm. and um sorry the name of it is. Ne- next, next level. Next level. Yeah. Yep. So that come after the the gym. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. So you wrapped up in the gyms. Wrapped up in the gym. Yeah. Um. Well, I was working with a, a mentor at the time, and he was kind of saying, "Hey, look, you, I think you've got something here with the way you communicate. Do you want to come help me out with this business called Next Level?" And I was like, "Oh no, not really. I wanted to be in the gyms. That's what I wanted to do. I was really, you know, I still I wasn't competing, but I loved my own training. Loved yep. that time. And one Saturday, he was away." And I took the business room. So, and I didn't know what I was doing. Mm. Like, I just had, you know, confidence, but I didn't really know what I was doing. All I did was share stories, uh, much like now, about yeah. to this room of business owners, and they loved it. They said the feed just got amazing feedback, and I was exhausted. I was exhausted after, I think, six hours of just talking back to back. Yeah. And, um, and kind of went, oh, all right, maybe there's something here. And that's kind of where it opened the door and... Um, I went on a trip to Hawaii and then New York. I caught up with um, some mentors there. They were in the fitness game. And I come back and went, oh, I'm just not feeling it. Like, I just don't want to be here. Um, this is in the gym. Don't mm-hmm. want to be here. I couldn't be bothered, you know. And I just, I saw a way out 
but I did it the wrong way. So okay. that's when I started down the road of next level. I did it quick because I was always shiny ball, new thing. I was loving this. This is what I'm going to do. I just expected people to understand. They didn't understand. Why would they? I had put so much into them. I invested so much in the gym and into the culture, into the team. And then I was just up and gone, okay. you know. And I was like, my, my entitled expectation was like, why don't you guys understand? This is what I want to do. I'm just following what I want to do. That's what I've done my whole life. Hmm. Um, you guys know who I am, and but but it it was still a foolish mistake. I mean, that perspective is not a good one to hold when you've promised people things. Mm. So, um, and I made I made the transition and basically started from scratch. So, when I left, the gym rapidly declined. There was a sale of business; it didn't go well. It, sorry, uh, is this at campus? Yep. Uh, okay. Yep. yep. So the, you're still running it. Yeah, still yep. running it. Um, I, there was a year of transition where I was doing both. Mm-hmm. So I was still in the gym and doing next level. Mm-hmm. Tr- decided to sell the business, found a buyer, didn't go well. Um, the culture really collapsed. There was no trust in the new business owner. Okay. Um, and it put me in a horrible financial position. Essentially, all the business expenses were still there, but there was no one in it anymore. Okay. Yeah, so I had about six months of a full lease and overheads with no revenue coming in. Jeez. So just lawyer, lawyer emails every week, no. real estate emails every week. You know, five grand here, two grand here, seven grand here, over and over and over again. So it stripped me bare. Mm. That was savage. That Sounds was savage. savage. Yeah, yeah, that was savage. You know, income's going from a healthy, thriving business income to essentially kind of like a like an apprenticeship of three hundred bucks a week is the, mm. was the was the get was the transition. You know, so that was rough. Well, wow, full yeah. on, full on, full wow. on. Yeah, there was um. Majority was it was all it was all my fault. I mean, there's no one else to there's no one else to blame. And and you know you can look back now, but it was like like no one won out of that situation. Mm. It was handled so poorly by me. Mm. Yeah. So and that kind of it, that 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 stuck around for a while. That okay. that in, in the industry. Yeah. 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 That's powerful learning from you, man. And good on you That's for it. being able to reflect on that, draw from it, yeah. and be like, these are the mistakes I made. Yeah. This is. Yeah, dude, I got slammed. Yeah. And rightly so. Crazy um, ownership of of your. I respect mm. that and admire that, man. Thanks, you man. saying, you know, it was it's on me because yeah. as leaders of the company, or you being involved and you mm-hmm. making the promises, or me being involved and me being a leader, yeah, yeah. I can relate to that. Yeah. Of it all sort of lands with us, right? Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. We can't that's palm right. that off. Yep, yep. Oh. And it said like, yeah, essentially lost all the relationships out of the gym as well. Which okay, was, which was that's probably the hardest thing. Must have been tough, yeah. Yeah, it was rough. It was rough. Did you keep, just out of curiosity, did you keep lifting as this was going on to help with, like, the mental health and physical yeah. health? Yeah, 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 I certainly did. Yeah, definitely. That, that's been a staple for, that's yeah. been a staple forever. When I was, uh, I was 16, my my father decided to take his own life. And and I just started, I probably started training in the gym at 15. And when that scenario happened in my life, I was like, all right, that's the place where everything settles yeah. and that just kind of has a common thread through the whole through my whole life so it anchors us down huh? yeah it truly me, truly me too, does yeah. yeah 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 so that's yeah that's just been a constant yeah um with next level bro mm-hmm. you're, you're still involved with that now no i left that in november th- last year oh, november last year yeah, so yep. we had a good run um four years in four years in next level my uh, ex-business partner we had a great time yeah and awesome. again similar thing like we were doing business development, personal development, leadership development. We were both young. Um, I had the, I mean, I had some academic experience behind me because amongst all this story, I went back and studied psychology as well. So wow. I've always just done heaps. Yeah. I've always just done so yeah. much. Yeah. Um, probably to a fault. So I had some academic history behind me. He was ex-military. He was the drill sergeant, man. Like he, if you wanted to get a fire up your ass, like you'd go see, you'd go see this guy. Yeah. Um, his name's Tim. And I would kind of come around the back and support him with some of the literature, some of my stories, and that started really, really organically. So I had a personal, I had a crew of guys, I was guys and girls, I was helping out in the fitness industry. I said, hey, look, come, I'll meet, introduce this guy to him. He's gonna have a chat. He had a chat. They all really, really enjoyed it. We just said, look, we're running this program. It's twelve weeks. And look, for anyone who did that program, we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> we sold you into something we had no clue what we were doing, but it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> and we made it up every week as we went. Yeah. And people loved it. Okay. Um, and that that didn't stop for three years. Like, we obviously got that's, more established, but blah, blah, blah. Enough. 
but that There's was gonna be some first. people listen to this like yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I was fun. part that of that. Was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I always knew you guys didn't know what you were doing, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we obviously developed it over time, and and we spent four years together um, developing something called the Next Level Academy, which was a level one, two, three business and personal advisory. Um, over the years, it, we had some corporate clients and some business clients, and we were going. By the end of it, we we're going to LA. I mean, I wasn't going as much as Tim, but two, three times a year, back and forth from Brisbane to LA, um, with a, with a, one or two clients over there and some work here, and and that was that was awesome. Mm. Again, so many mistakes. Oh, yep. so so many mistakes. Just because the speed. Again, the speed got me. It grew so fast. Where the model we built left no room for just like personal time and recovery and. We got stuck in the kind of entrepreneurial way of life, yep. um, which was like a lot of money coming in, a lot of money going out, mm. no time for anything but that, although we loved it. I just fell out of balance again, yep. <laughs> again, and got. I let it get to the point where it was kind of I couldn't actually come back from it. And so there's, again, more, way more personal stories in there about just not setting healthy boundaries, um, not... Yeah, you know, letting things slip that your heart and soul says don't do this and you go do it. Yeah. Um, and then it all comes to a head. So that finished in November, um, kind of amicably, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but now, yeah, now that that's kind of took some time away and because um, it was just go, go, go from basically 22 to what am I now? 30. Um, to last year yeah. was non-stop bro yeah. non-stop yeah. and like hey. trying to have a relationship in between all that and just yeah. pissing girls off because I was just so unavailable and just yeah. so ruthless yeah it was shit yeah. <laughs> wasn't a good human being but had heaps of fun and learned a ton yeah, yeah learned a ton so, wow man yeah now I'm here big big journey and now you've written a book Wrote a book, yeah. Yep. Wrote a book that was published this year. Is, um, when did you start writing it? Like in, amongst all of this, or were you keeping tabs? Or uh, started writing properly. Started writing that. I got to a point that well, when, when was I? Mar- March last year, still in next level. I had this book sitting there, like I've got to get this out. It's killing me. It's killing me. Like I can't go. It was disrupting my life. Like, really? Yeah. Wow. Go, and that's how most things in my life have gone. Yeah. Things, things pop up in heart and mind, and if I don't execute them, it just hurts me. Yeah. Like, it's weird. It's yeah. weird. Um, so I'd wake up at, like, 3.30 or 4 and do two hours of writing and then go start my day. Yeah. Um, and it, the book were, was written in three months, but the editing process was, like, 18. Oh, less than that, about a year. But it was just oh, it so painful. Yeah. So, so painful. Rewrites and edits and back and forth and this and that and structure and all that chaos it will it still wasn't done by the, i was so over i'm like publish it it's done I'm like no you got more i don't care publish it it's yeah. done send it out there yeah. yeah so so it's out there tell us a bit about the book what made you want to write um what made me want to write the book's called phoenix um it's about enduring traits of transformation so i've been around what i've been watching people do life for many many years um in the gym for whatever reason people would come to me uh, as you do you know they're in yeah. the gym it's a personal space and you they share yeah. stuff and a, right early on, a mentor said to me, he goes, Nat, once you realise that your communication is valuable, I'm terrified of what you could do. And I, I took that as a grain of Like, yeah, cool. You know, cute, cute statement, whatever. I've got stuff to do. I just kind of flipped it off. Yeah. And then um, over the years, when people keep affirming that to you, say, hey, look, the way you communicate is, gives me perspective or it gives me a chance or it makes me understand um, myself. And it's really, it's, it's endearing. It's nice. Um, people say things like, oh, you know, Nat, when I feel better about me when I'm around you. Can we hang out more? And you have no idea how to commercialise that. You know, what do you do with that? Mm. Although it's nice and endearing, I had no idea what to do with it. It was kind of a bit overwhelming, to be honest. But the book, long story short, the book had come to life because just years of watching people grow and develop. And having, I put some really, really intense personal stories in there about my own growth and development as well of just experiences that were so extreme that they were so scary to write down and it, it's funny because when you sit with a book you write it you look at it so many times you get you get normalized to the contents of the book and i'm like i just want to get this thing done it's killing me um yeah. I'm, I'm over it published it got it out there and then like one of my mess- mates messaged me like oh you got your book i can't wait i'm like holy shit <laughs> Some people can actually fucking read it. He's going to read it, yeah. Fuck. I don't know if I can swear. It's um, all right. 
<laughs> and it was really kind of it wasn't confronting until someone actually had it in their hands and I was like holy shit but yeah. the cool thing is is the heaviest stories in the book they're all personal okay have got the most feedback good wow. feedback crazy story actually I was um published the book and I turned up to a client's house and I'm sitting there he gets a knock at the door and it's the delivery of my book to his house and he's like oh look at this crazy <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so it was, it was a weird experience signing a book Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so that's what it's about. It's about um, yep. consistent traits of transformation that I've seen in myself and others that um, seem to last the test of time. Yeah, man. Yeah, and I got some just some basic things in there about sort of my predictions of where, what this means for the future of industry and work, and where I think, where I think the next kind of um, boom is going to be in development. That's kind of how I wrap it all up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What's your thoughts? We leave them, leave them with the suspense. We don't tell them about what what your predictions are, yep. or are you or are you keen to share the predictions. Uh, you can roll it how you want. The that's community, a, that's a good call. That's the community call. can go out yeah, there yeah. and um, what do you, or give them a sneak peek. Traditionally, I would I would say it, but I'm not gonna. Okay, I'm not gonna. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. All right, we might have to do an episode two. Good done. <laughs> Sounds good, man. That fascinating story, and um, you've drawn drawn some powerful lessons there. Yeah, uh-huh. You've done the book. What are you up to now? Okay, so um, left Next Level last year. In, yep. So we're in 2020. Oh, this is COVID year. Yep. I thought this is COVID year. Yep. Crazy year. It's been hectic in oh the gym God. game since oh, you've left, bro. Dude, I think I uh, you've so made, a, sorry you've made you a nice exit, bro. I feel so sorry for you guys. <laughs> Watching gyms just perish one by one. It was yeah. nuts. But so, yeah, last year left Next Level. Um, took, a little, took some project work uh, for about six or eight weeks. And then I was kind of left... Honestly, I wasn't, you know, you'd think all this time in business I'd be, you know, have like, financially st- stable and I wasn't at all. So there was still that <laughs> pressure there. All I did was I said, I'm going to pop up a webinar um, about what I'm seeing and whatever happens is what happens. Um, that webinar was about a style of development that I enjoyed myself personally, number one. It was very, what would you call I mean, you could call it unique. It's very, uh, you could almost say intellectual, but it's for me, it was really embodied. For me, it solved so many problems. I saw this style of development. It was really big and whole. It was really comprehensive. It was technical. I had no idea what it, how it was going to go, but I said, all I want to do is I'm going to pop up this webinar. I'm going to share this really intense, comprehensive way to view yourself in the world. And if people like it, great. If they don't, I don't care. I'll have fun delivering it. Okay. Um, I did it. I think I had about... 60 or 50 people register, about 25 people showed up, and every single one of them said, what the hell are you doing now? Where do we get more of this? Wow. I'm like, holy shit, okay. Yep. Something has struck a nerve. Um, and like typical Nathaniel style, I went, oh, yeah, we're starting this day. You know, this is what we're doing. I have no clue. We're on, let's here. go. We're on, we're on. Yeah. I have no clue what we're doing. Um, and a company was started called Outliers. Uh, and out the out again where this happened was I didn't go out there searching for this this kind of come to me I looked at the clients who I worked really really well with across the years and I all I saw in a flash was the same person um, this outlier personality type and I'll explain it really quickly they're normally hyper functioning um, so they achieve above average levels of success or even just uh, craftsmanship in whatever they do they lead highly complex lives they normally have multiple projects on the go at once. Uh, they normally struggle with a stable or core identity. Um, they normally crave peace, but their level of ambition gets in the way. Um, and they have a high swing factor, which means they're deeply focused, and then in a flash, they're massively withdrawn from the world and no one wants to go near them. Mm. That just come at me. Um, and I was like, I've got to, again, listen to this thing. And now, I mean, I'm in the very extremely fortunate position that I have this company called Outliers that works with a whole bunch of people exactly like that. Now, it's so obscure. Like, it's so obscure and it's so hyper-niched that I was like, "What? this doesn't make any sense, like, at all. But it's interesting what happens when you when you put it out there. People go, I, it was scary how many people go, that's me. Um, and I don't know where it started. I think I have some kind of inclination that it started with just how hyper-focused we are on career, mm. that some people will get so, so good at their career and that other areas of their personal development will, will fall away, leaving this kind of outlier type. It's very common in the community. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that um, hyper focus on career, yep. but everything else Just, gets left behind. Yeah. Family, relationships. Totally. Da, da, da. And they feel in pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And it's for some of the patterns I see with with my guys is like they have so many good things in their in their life. They're so functional. They don't feel safe enough, or even. Um, validated enough to complain because they have so many good things. So there's a confusion of what I call subject-object. They're, they're confusing that their life is so good, in air quotes, that why do, why do I have the right to complain? But your inner reality and your inner being and how you relate to your self-concept has nothing to do with what you have. It partially has something to do with what you have. Mm-hmm. But it's not going to keep you thriving and healthy and enjoying yourself. Um, and there's just so many people that I say, look, you're going to achieve great things. And all the more power to you, just please ask me, ask yourself this one question. Are you going to like who you are while you're standing on top of the mountain? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, are you going to like who you are yeah. while standing on top of the mountain? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's an important question. Because if the answer is no, it doesn't matter what you build or create. Um, whatever your building or creation or your business is, is only is only functional to the level of your worst personal day. Mm. And so if your worst personal day is horrible, yeah. where you need to withdraw for three days or you need to go have a bender with the boys, if that's your worst personal day, your business is, is at jeopardy all the time. So a lot of the style of development I do now is not about... It's not about, for me, peak performance and growth and all that. It's about how can we make your worst day less and less worse? Yeah. And if we achieve a level of worst day that's manageable in your window of tolerance and resourceful and growth driven, you're going to be fine because success is natural to you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at now. I have a company called Outliers. Outliers. Yeah, Outliers. Uh, like you like you would have an outlier on a, yep. a data graph, you know, it, it wrecks the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So, one outlier, I said my, my kind of vision is one outlier uh, can change anything. And yep. they normally do. They're normally really influential. What are you seeing as the destructive patterns yeah. with your outlier clients? Oh, that are, yeah. Is there a lot? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So good. Yeah, that, yeah. That's the stuff I enjoy. Because yeah. I enjoy, um, yeah, with our community, when we're working on physical health, right, uh-huh. and their conditioning, yep. there's often all of the other fundamentals that if they're neglected, you can train as so hard you, as you want it. in the gym. Exactly. But if you're not you know, looking after all these mm-hmm. these other seven or eight factors you, yep. you're going to have a hard time yeah, and yeah, then yeah. the frustrations of why am I not getting results why am I not f- yeah, I feel better but I don't look better or yeah. I don't I, might, I don't even feel better and it's just this it's it, a big mess it, it's, a sh- it's yeah. in shambles right? <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly what exactly. are you seeing as the destructive patterns okay so on a personality trait wise uh, the people that I work with normally have a high trait openness so their, their, their personality trait of openness is really really high um, that does a few things one it keeps you amazingly open to things right? so yeah. you're always open to opportunities new things okay yeah so high openness means your high will be higher but your lows will be deathly low okay so when, when a person has a high, high openness and they feel like they're having a low day they're typically having a lower than low day than most so what happens when you're lower than low well you if you don't have emotional skills or someone like me in your life or someone skilled, um, what do you turn to? Substance. Hmm. <laughs> it's, that's the destructive thing is how do I deal with this? My lows are lower than usual. I'll use any substance I can to regulate myself. You know, never know because they're so damn functional. Hmm. It's this crazy kind of hidden personality that it, everyone on the outside looks so solid but on the inside is super destructive. So that's the first one is substance. Um, the second one is not feeling a core or stable identity. So, sorry to interrupt. Substance. Are we talking what you mentioned before, like sugar, fats, da da da, or are we drugs talking alcohol, alcohol, drugs, uh, like drugs, the hard alcohol. stuff? The hu- as, yeah, and a, and a shitload of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not not all not all of them, but I mean uh, most of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most of them. They're so functional, so you never yeah. know. Yeah. Um, sorry. The identity. Yeah. So yeah. they a lot of the times they lack a core or stable identity because the reason, and this is a big one too, the reason why they're so functional is their adaptability is so high. You put these guys in any environment and they'll win. Yeah. Right? It's very, very hard. This is crazy. and This is not a popular view either, Svet. It's very, very hard to be authentic and good at everything at the same time. Because right? if you're authentic, well, then you, you be kind of one person across all environments. Mm-hmm. But when you're this kind of outlier type, they change in any environment. So they change to what the environment needs, which is amazing for commercial growth and, and business growth. 
but it's shocking for stable identity. Okay. When you don't have a stable identity, you're opened up to massive attachments. Big attachments or big fears um, come into the place when someone doesn't have a real stable identity. So they might get a partner and overly attach or have disorganized attachment where they're in the relationship, out of the relationship, in the relationship, out of the relationship. Okay. And so not having that, um, as I said at the start, they've normally got a really complex life. Not having the structure there or a stable relationship opens them up to every destructive behavior you can imagine. Yeah. They're doing it. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, I've never really thought of it that way with uh, that in, out, in, in out, out of the relationship. Yeah. No good for your own identity. Yeah. Because it's like, I'm safe, I'm stable, I've got security, boom. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm in trouble. Blah, exactly. Blah, blah. Alarm bells, emotional distress. Who am I now? What am I now? What's this relationship now? Yeah. Oh, we feel warm again. I'm back in. I'm safe. I'm secure. Hi, high. I'm feeling higher than exactly. high. And then, and then lower than low. Yeah. And then they're trying to run a business in between all that and they just yeah. lose it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Fascinating, man. Yeah. Any other key ones that are that destructive behaviors? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. They're. What do we got here? We've got the big ones: drug, sex, alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, a a kind of denial or a, a non-acceptance of um, their own heart, and that's really destructive. So they 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 find it hard to sit with their own inner subjective kind of reality of what they feel, what's their affect regulation or emotional regulation. They're really intelligent, heady-based people, yeah. intellectual, so that there's a lot of actual destruction in that too because when you see the world as objective, um, you see the world in a sort of mechanistic way, then it destroys connection, destroys social engagement, destroys a connection with your heart brain, you know, so... Yeah. so when heart brain is connected, you feel naturally joy, love, gratitude, the things that make it all worth it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, mate, I'm so bloody curious about your position you're in now with the gym and what you're doing. Because yeah. I knew Darko and I went to uni. Well, yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier resistance training. You were uh -huh. teaching RT. Is yes. that before Tony Shields or during? Mate, right, in the, right in the middle. Crazy. Yeah. yeah right. Because yeah, yeah. I had Tony Shields for resistance training. Yeah. He's the, he's the was, man. He, it was such a good experience. He was yeah. one of my favorite lecturers yeah, and tutors. Yeah. I still remember him giving a, um, he was talking about hamstrings, of course. <laughs> of course, that, what else does he do? Yeah. <laughs> but he was standing on the table with this, like, um, uh, he was giving the difference between, like, something elastic and something. So he had this big steel cable. Like, he was, like, <laughs> pulling, he was standing on the... And it was just like, man, you're a maniac. Yeah. And he got he got someone in a lecture to do push-ups on the table as well. Yeah. And this guy, this kid's cooked. Like, he was, he does, like, 15 push-ups. And he's like, oh, my God, what's going yeah. on? And Tony's like, another one, another one. And he's fully shaking. Like, yeah. he's, you know, he's all over it. And Tony's just... You know, deconstructing his push-up technique and why he's shaking like That's that, crazy. like ATP, like on off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, I enjoyed every minute of it, yeah. man. I remember when um, he was telling us, like, at this point in time, I've been working so hard to tear my own bloody hamstring, and it just won't tear, <laughs> and it's frustrating, <laughs> and I'm hating my training, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing this, yeah. and it just is. Like, I mean, I'm trying to tear it so yeah. that so that I can rehab <laughs> so it, can... <laughs> so that I can teach you guys how to rehab it, and we're like, what yeah, is this maniac. guy? Yeah. 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 Uh, impressive dude, like super um, impressive. Javelin for like high level, yeah. high level athlete in javelin, and then I think discus as well. If yeah. You yeah, I remember seeing him um, walking past the cafe at QUT, and he had his uh, he had his breakfast there, it's like a big bacon and avo sandwich or something, and he's just ripped the guts out of it, removed the bread, oh, and just he just he just for full, real. full keto life. Okay, and the he, original keto yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he was shredded. Yeah, like. One day we were training down there in the gym, and I don't know if he's supposed to do this, but he got—he's like, come in there, and we're like, oh, Tony, take that, like, show us your, show us your rig, and he takes his shirt off. I'm like, oh my god, you're so shredded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we, we definitely admired it for sure. Me too, man, and yeah. our whole crew of um yeah. of grads at the time, we all admired him yeah. as well. I think he was like the only, because um the. I love the clinical side of what mm. I do, but I, I also enjoy the um, the performance and the uh. health, general pop side of things. And he was like the first lecturer 
that, that I came across at uni, that was Jack, yep. right? And yep. had a, had a de- decent exactly. physique. And I was like, okay, this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, I don't know, but you just drew me to it. I'm like, yep. listen, and he's talking about training and resistance training. Yep. Perfect man to teach resistance yeah. training at yeah, yeah. uni, right? And I had so, but man, I had so much calf envy. He's got the best calves <laughs> yeah. in the game. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what he's up to now. I know yeah. that he was involved with the Nord board and yep. bold performance yep. something or other. So I was, on, I was with the Nord board. Oh, right. Yeah. I was okay. helping out that crew with um, Dave Opar and Ryan Timmons. Okay. Um, and I remember I was just a lackey. Like, I'd have to calibrate the plates and yep. do all that shit. Like, okay. Hang, yeah, so getting the um, getting the load cells on the back of the Nord board and hanging 20 kilo plates off there and just making like making sure they calibrated to 20 kilos. Okay. Yeah, so, but, and it's like shaving people down for their prep and yeah, I was a lackey. But you've done that. everything. Yeah, I've done everything. <laughs> so did the Nord board get sold to somebody? I or? believe so. Okay. I believe from memory, this could be wrong here, but I believe sh- the AFL ah. purchased it. They, I think they purchased 10 units or something. I think that was the original. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure they like reduce re-injury rates by like 90% or yeah, something so, crazy. Something great. Yeah, they were onto it. I don't know how accurate this is, but loose. I don't remember the details, but loosely, I know that when Leicester City Football Club it mm-hmm. won the Premiership in and the Premier League, they had invested a lot of money into the sports science uh-huh. side of things, Got it. and then I don't know whether they were involved with. Right. The Nord, I think somehow the Nord board was involved yeah. in the English Premier League, and right. I remember thinking, "What? This is crazy!" Like yeah. my maniac lecturer. Uh, Tony Shield, like he was involved with some the, yeah. the, that hamstring guy. Yeah. I, again, I don't know. I could be fully wrong, and I could be butchering that. Yeah. But I think there was something in there. I heard the same thing. Yeah. I heard that it that it got picked up by somewhere as well. But man, the, the rudimentary original Nord boards were brutal. Yeah. It was just wood, load cells, and like you just had to take it. You yeah. just had to cop, and the the protocols they were so early in the game. Like I remember going to UQ, and I had to do a ten by ten, Nordic on the minute, and so my hamstrings were. It, it, I had to do an MRI, a 10 by 10, um, in my, like, gown, in inside the, like, just next to the MRI machine, and then get back in there just so they could get images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is brutal. Yeah, I was cooked. Yeah. For our community members listening, they're, they're bitching and whinging when Dark and I make them do a uh, two by six. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. on 10 by 10. That's 10, 10, 10 sets of 10. I'm on a 10 by 10, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was sore for... That's a well, week after. Yeah, yeah inspiration yeah. for me to ramp up the Nordics. <laughs> exactly. When, um, they were in our last program. Uh, we phased them out of this one, yep. but in our last SNC program, they were yeah, in there. Rough. Yeah, rough. so good. Um, with Zara Athletic, man, it's um, it's been a journey. Yeah. I've um, I've been a private practicing EP. Mm-hmm. So since coming out of Q, I I was also at QUT. So when when were you um, d- doing the tutoring and the? I was twenty two. I'm thirty now. Eight years ago, man. I think it was just after me. Yeah, so okay. I, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Perhaps, yeah. 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 Um, so I, I graduated in 2010. Was oh, okay. Right? Were you oh, doing? Yeah, no, you would have been, yeah, you graduated well early. Well, yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just missed yeah. out on your, yeah. um, on all your lecturing <laughs> all and, and lecturing. On, your, on your tutoring, man. <laughs> man, I was there for the girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, um, yeah, so even back then when I was in undergrad, I mean, I was fortunate enough to know what I wanted to do straight out oh, of high school. So good. Yeah. yeah, high school, um, HP was the thing. You talked about that fire and that yeah. light and, um, you know, that passion uh-huh. early on. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to experience it cool. in, in high school. Oh, at, how good's that? At HP, man. It, I was just like, yeah. When, when there was a, a HP subject on or something, whether it was anatomy that we were learning or, yeah. or physiology or just being out on a field and moving. You're naturally academic, you could work your way through that pretty easy? No, I had to okay. work hard. Right. Yeah, no. Right. I, n- naturally, I'm more inclined towards sport and yep. training and anything like that, but yeah, not, okay. no, I'm nowhere near. My sister is, is way more academic, academic than me. Right. Yeah, right. she could sit there and learn and study for... 13 hours yeah, right. straight or something crazy but whereas me I'll, I'll do a bit of learning and then I have to move and I get yeah, a you've got to figure it out yeah, yeah and I just have to get up and, and walk away from the desk and right. come back and, right, 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 right. Um, so yeah so I had to work a bit harder but I'm, I'm, I was academic enough to be able to finish high cool. school and get myself into exercise physiology yeah, which cool. was my goal yeah and then um, when yeah, I nice. yeah and then when I was at QUT um, yeah year one 
had no idea where it was going. Yeah, yeah or me what, too. What, yeah. Me too. Yeah. I got but, terrible grades. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, finishing high school, did not take a gap year. Went, knew straight what in. I wanted straight in. Uh, so it was this new experience, uni, campus, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. meeting new mates and you know, yeah. living the uni life. Um, the consistent was Darko and I training together. Right. We, we knew each other back then. We knew each other before uni. Okay. Um, we met... Um, uh, like, late primary school early high school yeah okay right. and we we started hitting the gym together then right, right. um like um, our first ever commercial gym on the south side of town yeah. uh, just clueless um we <laughs> we were self-taught we'd be yeah. like man i learned this and read yeah, this yeah, and yeah. this mag and oh man i read how this good, on like how good, like flex magazine and stuff like we yeah <laughs> big time like all of the magazines all of the articles online like yeah. duck is like man i read this on bodybuilding.com <laughs> and then uh, he's got this diary that he still talks about of like all our training yes. logs and things he would have bought all the supplements too from bodybuilding.com we, we had it every yeah, yeah, yeah of course of and course. like uh, my mom's getting cranky she's like what are all these supplements yeah, yeah, yeah. she's flushing them steroids. down the toilet <laughs> yeah yeah i'm like mom they're not steroids it's just something she's like yeah whatever, whatever. i'm not liking this yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely. I remember Darko got this um, mass gainer once. It was just nuts. This mass gainer was called like Red Back or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, like up until that point, we would buy like a kilo of uh-huh. protein powder or three kilos or four. Yeah. And then he got this like eight <laughs> kilo monster. And this, <laughs> this thing's huge. He got in trouble. He's got a shovel for a scoop. <laughs> yeah, man. He got in trouble when he brought that home. It oh, was like, no. yeah. Um, anyway, so the, the consistent was he and I learning together um, – like in the gym, like just the, between ourselves, and then like other gym dudes that we looked up uh-huh. to at that point in time, like guys okay. that have yeah, yeah, well, you know, the, the big guy in the gym, the big guy in yeah. the gym, like the bodybuilder in the gym or the powerlifter in the gym, uh-huh. and he'd come over and be like, "What you guys are doing is a waste of time." Yeah, and this is why. And yeah, try yeah, this, yeah. and then we'd be like, "You know, why are you doing thirty sets of triceps?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like just burning out your tries. Yeah. Or man, I'm feeling like this shoulder pain. And he's like, "Well, have you thought about like?" <laughs> doing less chest yeah. and more back like, no what? no what? Man, it's chest all the time he's like yeah go hit your rear delts a little or something yeah. I'm like oh Stereo's damn like eight weeks okay. away, what are yeah. you talking about um yeah um all of that man and so so i, was I think there as well i was doing the same thing yeah um and then um training training uni came mm-hmm. um fortunate enough to go straight into ep yeah um loved learning about the body loved then um applying that because yeah. um again through um we're going to care for time um, through um, just drive and in, I don't know that intrinsic light mm-hmm. um, I, I think I was one of the first out of my cohort at uni to hit them up and say hey how come like, why can't we practice as personal trainers right what do we need to do to like be PT because yeah. I was I think I was maybe second year in we've done a, quite a bit of learning a bit of learning oh and then they, they kept going to me at QT. They're like, oh, well, yeah, look, we've been here and this, here and there. Like, leave it with us. We'll try and come up with something. Yep. And then eventually they brought there in was a, that, a bridging yeah. course. Yep, 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 yep. And so they, That they, got popular when I was in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there was um, QT, and then they're like, it was like this memo that came through in an email to everyone. Like you can like, be PTs now if you do this. It was yeah. like a weekend bridging course. Yeah. And I was like, yes, this is this is what I've been I'm waiting in. for. Yeah, um, it, yeah, it was pretty expensive at the time, yeah. but it was it was all I needed because yeah. in a weekend you get a cert three and four. Wow. And it was in the valley and some some young dude running totally. out, like yeah, yeah just yeah. cashing in. Clueless <laughs> operation, but like it, yeah, they yeah. learn you you learn a thing or two cashing in for yeah, sure it yeah. would have been a wave yeah. talk about trends <laughs> yeah that yeah. bridging course would have been a, oh, would yeah, have been yeah, a wave. Yeah. maybe you know some dudes in the industry I do that know some guys yeah. Yeah. okay i was in, it was like a couple of streets away uh-huh. from here anyway i then had a so three and four but it meant that i was second year of uni practicing yeah. as a personal trainer in a commercial and, gym yeah. applying all this stuff that That's i was cool. learning this is a long time ago and then um year three year four graduating and i was so you've done the one thing for your career the whole way the whole Dude, way. Dude, that's rare man. these days. The whole way, that's yeah. That's so rare. Personal training, um, and then as soon as I could practice as an exercise scientist, exercise science, and then I was an yep. exercise physiologist fourth year, yep. accredited with ESSA, and yep. then practicing EP. Amazing. Yeah. There was a bloke that was running his private practice w- in the commercial gym where I was personal training, yeah, so right. I was volunteering, shadowing, helping him out. With and his. how did you go with the two things? First of all, I met Darko in Exercise Prescription. That was a hard unit. Do you remember Exercise yeah, Prescription? Yeah, man. That was hard. It was super tough. Yeah. I remember meeting meeting Darko in there. And for the community, <laughs> for you guys, I'll let everyone know, my knees are sore from carrying Darko through that subject. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is hilarious. He would come to me all the time. He's like, bro, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I got your back, dude. 
Yeah, <laughs> that is hilarious. A really hard subject. Hard. Man. The, so much maths. The lady that that, that ran it. I yeah. don't know, man. Yeah, I know. Should we? You don't even need to say her name. <laughs> should we drop her name? We won't. We won't drop her name. Yeah. Well, I don't want to shout her out, man. Yeah. She was because I felt like she took pride in people failing. It was totally. like one she of the so things. Intense. Yeah, yeah. She wanted people to fail. Like yeah. one of the first things that she dropped on us week one was like, oh, the fail rate is like yeah. you know like da 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 oh, da da. So yeah, many of is. you guys are just gonna fail. I'm like, awesome encouragement. Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting there I like in that the stuff, man. Yeah. That's so annoying. Like, why are you proud of that lady? Yeah. You should do a better job. Yeah, yeah, that's you. That's a reflection of your terrible teaching. Yeah, <laughs> don't boast about how many people fail. Yeah. But anyway, so but the second part of that question was your career EP, career coach. Um, how are you managing the just the crazy fitness culture that is so the opposite of like having a developed craft? There's just it's so easy to get out there on the gym floor now, and there's no disparity between that case. For example, if you're a lawyer. You know there's a special counsel. You know there's a partner. You know mm. your place in the pecking order. You can stand next to someone who's just come out of certain three or four and no one knows that you're a career coach versus yeah. this kind of like, oh, I'll give it a try. Isn't that a crazy thing? Yeah. And in the community, it's like, oh, personal trainer, PT, coach, yep. coach, yeah. EP, EP. And there's just a exactly. huge... Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I struggle with that and yeah. I get frustrated with it. Yeah. When, yeah. It's um, That's it's a, a it's a tough one, man. Yeah, uh, especially other gyms in the community that um, I'm all for healthy competition, and I'm yeah. all for there being more and more gyms because mm-hmm. it means more and more Australians are moving. moving. Yeah. yeah, and it means, and I think uh, at the end of the day, any movement is better than nothing. Yeah. So I I applaud and I encourage people to just give it a go and just yeah. start moving, f- figure it out from there. Um, yeah, but I I, I struggle a lot, man. Yeah, um, man we could we could probably chat chat a bit more about uh-huh. that at a. Uh, at our next I'd one love for to, sure yeah because I've always had a before we get to close it up here I've always once well, Dark I mentioned yourself when we were doing some work I hadn't met you yet but you've got a class act here mate like you're a really really class act coming from the gym game and watching people open gyms and um, oh, oh god I wish you if you were a public company I'd be investing in you I think you're really really onto it just your quality your professionalism you're out mate you're outclassing everyone I've seen so well done thank you very much Nat I appreciate it a lot man Um, I think it's come on the back end of um, timing Um, I didn't rush into it I've been perfecting my craft over the last 10-15 years lots of Lots of lessons, lots mm-hmm. of things that I've drawn from what not to do in commercial gyms, how not to treat people, mm-hmm. um, clients that I would meet that were burnt by other oh, coaches yeah. or other personal trainers. Yeah. Um, and then um, 2020, lots of hard work, mm-hmm. um, trying to always make sure that we put our members first, mm-hmm. um, taking in the feedback, um, and then yeah. building it from there. It's been, it's been fun so far. Yeah, and it's... I'm super grateful about the positive feedback that yeah. we've had from existing clients over the years and, and new clients that come in and, and um, yeah it's it's yeah from, i mean for whatever my whatever my humble opinion is worth being floating around this industry for you guys who train here or, or come here just hang around you, this is the place thank you very much man i i appreciate it a lot thank you for your time today i'm i'm being mindful that we've got to we've got to wrap got up to as run. well um where does our community get in touch with you sure. if they need your services and also your book, man. Yeah. Where do they? Um, where if you go get? to outliers.consulting, um, a pop up will pop up and you can get a free digital version. And there's also links there to buy it from Amazon and all, all major kind of online bookstores. Just search Phoenix and normal spelling. Um, you can grab everything there. And I'm pretty, I don't, I don't really do social media. I don't really okay. have a social media. I mean, I've got Facebook. Like but yeah, I just kind of. Yeah, I mean, my, it, it, honestly, just email me direct, Nathaniel at outliers.consulting, and you'll get me direct. Um, our community is broad, and we uh-huh. yeah we we see a bit of everybody in the, in yeah, the yeah, gym. Cool. Who's like your go-to champion client? Who do you want to contact you? Who's Man, Honestly, anyone. Anyone? Anyone and everyone. Uh, yeah. Business people, professionals? Uh, no, I, I kind of don't want to... Yeah, put it... Yeah, I don't want to put like, kind of any parameters on it. If, cool. if so, uh, it probably just says if something rung your bells yep give me a shout see see what happens 100 percent. yeah cool i am totally booked until early 2021 so okay we can start the conversation yep. yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah. sounds good cool thank you man appreciate it all good